Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a two-way ANOVA using SPSS. So in this data view, I have some fictitious data, and I have two independent variables. The first is duration, so this would be duration of counseling treatment, and it has three levels. It has 6, 12, and 18-week durations. And then I have gender, a separate independent variable that has two levels, male and female. And then I have a dependent variable that would contain the results of a measure administered at the end of the study. And let's assume for the purposes of this demonstration that a lower symptom level indicates fewer symptoms. So this is an ideal research design and data collection for a two-way ANOVA. Now you may be wondering why two t-tests couldn't be run. So a t-test looking at duration and symptom level and gender and symptom level. Well there are a few reasons. Uh, the first is duration has three levels of the independent variable, 6, 12, and 18 week. Uh, a t-test would only be able to handle two levels of an independent variable although you could certainly run t-tests for every possible combination. For example, a t-test between 6-week and 12-week, and 12-week and 18-week, and a t-test between the scores from 18-week and 6-week. Now, in gender, you only have two levels, so you could run a t-test there. But there are still other difficulties with the t-test for this type of uh, data setup. First, running multiple t-tests will increase the type 1 error rate. So that's the probability that we will reject the null hypothesis when in fact it was true. So using an example like this, we may find that, let's say between the levels male and female, the, the two levels of the gender independent variable, we may find that there's a statistically significant difference uh, on symptom level between males and females and we would reject the null hypothesis that there was no difference on the symptom level variable between the two levels of independent variable but in fact there was no difference so that's a type 1 error we'd be saying that we're rejecting the null hypothesis would be saying there is a difference when in reality there is no difference. And when you run multiple t-tests you increase the chances of making a type 1 error also known as an alpha error. Second, with multiple t-tests we can't study interaction effects. And this is really one of the great features of ANOVA. We can look to see if there's an interaction effect between duration and gender. We, sh we would call that duration times gender. So it, the main effect would be with one independent variable. Right? So the main effect of duration on the dependent variable symptom level, the main effect of gender on the dependent variable. But ANOVA allows us to look at the interaction effect between duration and gender on the dependent variable. So let's run the analysis for to ANOVA would be analyze general linear model univariate and this is how it's arranged by default. So we know the dependent variable is going to be the symptom level. So we'll put that in and the independent variables here or fixed factors will be duration and gender. I'm going to leave model and contrast set to default so I'm going to start with plots. So I'm going to plot duration on the horizontal axis, so I'm going to add that, and gender, and add that, and then I'm going to have duration on the horizontal axis and gender on a separate line. I'm going to add that. So duration, gender, and duration times gender. 
Now for post hoc tests in this example, uh, it won't work for gender. That's just two levels. So there's really no need for a post hoc test. But for duration, you could have one. And I'm going to select REGWQ uh, for this post hoc test because when sample sizes are similar, this post hoc test offers good control of type 1 errors and also good power. Power being the ability to detect a difference when it's really there. So I'm going to just select that one post hoc test and click continue. I'm going to leave save set to default and for options I will display the means overall for duration, gender, and duration times gender. And of course I do want to compare main effects and I'm going to move from LST to Bonferroni for the confidence interval adjustment. I'm going to show the descriptive statistics, so I'll check that off, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity tests. So I'm going to click continue and now this analysis is ready to run, so I'll click OK. So you can see at the top here we have between subjects factors, and that would be duration, three levels, and gender, two levels. And you can see the sample sizes, n, identical for all the different levels of duration and for the two levels of gender. The descriptives here, fairly straightforward. You can take a look at the means for 6, 12, and 18 week uh, by gender. A couple of the scores that really stand out is for 18 week uh, male. That's a fairly low mean score, 36. And for 18 week uh, total, uh, 40.17, fairly low. Moving down to Levine's test, so this test homogeneity of variances, and you can see that we would reject the null hypothesis here. It's 0 0.000. It would have to be greater than 0 0.05 so that we could fail to reject it. So since we're rejecting the null hypothesis, we are violating the assumption of homogeneity of variances for this analysis. So we're saying that the error, error variance of the dependent variable is not equal across groups. The null hypothesis says that it is equal. This is something you'd have to declare as limitation in a manuscript if you're going to include these results in a manuscript. But 2A ANOVA is fairly robust to violating this assumption, the assumption of homogeneity of variances. So it's not something that I'm going to let stop uh, the analysis, but it's something that certainly I need to be aware of. Moving down to test of between subjects effects, you can see that you have duration, there is a statistically significant difference on the dependent variable symptom level for the independent variable duration. It's statistically significant. 0 0.001 is less than 0 0.05, which would be the alpha level. And you can see we have a partial eta squared here of 0.162, which means that 16.2% of the variance in the dependent variable can be attributed to duration. Then moving down to gender, you see it is not statistically significant. 0.614 uh, is greater than 0 0.05, so this is not statistically significant. So we assume there's no difference on the symptom level by gender. And you can see the partial eta squared 0 0.003, uh, it's quite small. But then we have the interaction effect, duration times gender, and that is also statistically significant. The significance level here is actually lower than for just duration alone, and you can also see the uh, effect size, partial eta squares measure of effect size, is 22.7%. So 22.7% of the variance in 
The symptom level can be explained by duration times gender, uh, larger than the 16.2% for duration alone. Moving down the results, uh, we have the, the grand mean for the symptom level, and we have estimates here for duration. And again, what stands out here is the low mean for the 18-week group. Then we have pairwise comparisons. So we know there's a statistically significant difference between the levels of the duration independent variable on the symptom level. Like up here, we see it's 0 0.001. So a statistically significant difference between the symptom level scores on the duration independent variable. But we don't know where those differences are until we look at the pairwise comparisons because we have three levels in the independent variable. So we know there's a statistically significant difference, we just don't know where until we analyze this table. So what we can see here is we do not have a statistically significant difference between the 6 and 12 week levels of the independent variable. But we do have a statistically significant difference between the 6 and 18 week and the 12 and 18 week is 0 0.006 which is below 0 0.05 so we have two statistically significant differences and one non statistically significant finding and moving down remember here we're in duration so as we move down the univariate test we've seen these results before uh, in the table above, and then moving to gender, we have the means for male and female. We do have pairwise comparisons, but uh, we already know this result from the table above, 0.614, not statistically significant. And of course the univariate test we've seen before in the table above as well. And here we have an interaction effect, duration times gender. So we can see that, again, if we just look at this really quickly, it seems like the 18-week uh, times the male levels has a fairly low score of 36. And also the 12-week times female level at 40.8. And then moving down, we have the results of the REGWQ, the uh, homogeneous subsets. So you can see kind of the 18 week is in one subset and the 12 and 6 week are another, uh, which is no surprise. And then moving down to the profile plots. So this is duration. You can see the uh, 6 week, the 12 week, not too different, but the 18 week seems to be much more effective reducing uh, symptom level and then looking at just gender uh, the scores were higher for male and lower for female and then when we look at them uh, combined and again before um, I analyze this graph just want to note again this is fictitious data so this is data that was just made up used for this analysis but if this were real data, I'll show you how this would be interpreted. Uh, you can see that for both males and females at the six week, the symptom level was roughly the same. That was pretty close. For the 12 week, the male symptom level was higher than for the six week, and the female symptom level was lower. So if you're trying to apply the findings just based on interpreting the 6 and 12 weeks so far, we would say that the 6 week was roughly equally effective, uh, but for the 12 week, the females responded uh, much better than the males. But then looking at the 18 week, we see the females did not respond as well. The 18 week it increases, the symptom level increases from 12 to 18 but the males show a marked decrease in symptom level. 
So interpreting the re these results and trying to apply them uh, using all three levels, uh, you might say that uh, females would benefit the most from the 12-week group and males would benefit the most from an 18-week. All this information, of course, uh, is indicated in the tables above, uh, but I feel it's always good to have the graphical representation as it aids in the interpretation of the results. I hope you found this video on conducting a two-way ANOVA in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.